Okay, so here's the lecture one, um, lecture note. <clears throat> and um, we recall uh, kind of what we want to have about the events and what not. And so the thing is that uh, some kind of uh, reasonable thing should be uh, defined as events and we have a logical thinking rules for events. And we have especially, we have the intersection of two events. So that means that events E1 and E2 both occur. Then there's the union which corresponds to OR. So either E1 or E2 or both occur. That's the union of two sets. There's the complement. So the set of points not contained in E also denoted as this way, the complement. That means that the event E does not occur. And finally, the subset notation is here. Now there's a need to point out that a subset means in this notes A subset B means that um, whenever we there's a point in A, it also implies that this point in A is also a point in B. Some people in algebra, they would use this notation that they would write it as uh, this way. But in probability, uh, we don't use this notation. We Instead, we just use this notation to mean that A is a subset of B. Every point of A is also a point of B. OK, that's the notation convention about um, the subset notation used in this course. OK. Then what else? Empty set is there, OK, and the full set. And then, um, <clears throat> OK, so if we have event uh, E1 and event E2, so we want to calculate probabilities of E1 and E2. So we want also to calculate the probability that both E1 and E2 occur. And we want to calculate the probability that E1 or E2 occurs. So to be able to calculate the probabilities of these, that means that whenever we have two events here, E1 and E2, then also the intersection and the union should be events as well. So let's recall the space of events F here. We want to define a space of events or collection of events. So the, that's the collection where we can calculate probabilities. And so there should be kind of stability. If we have two sets in F, so then the intersection and the union should be in F as well. Also to be the, able to do the logical not operation, if we have a set in uh, F, then the complement should also be a set in F. So the collection of F uh, should be stable for intersection union and the complement. And that sounds kind of natural. Should it be stable with something else as well to do reasonable logic? Well, it might be that we want to calculate the event that, um, let's say, we are doing lots of coin flips and we would like to understand the event that every time we get uh, heads, for example, in coin flip, infinite coin flip. So then we want to actually need that infinite um, intersection and infinite union should be also stable here. So instead of all, only having um, intersection and union for two sets. So we might actually have the intersection and union of uh, infinitely many sets. I think uh, that is something which is reasonable. We also would like to have actually this to be true for uncountably infinite union and intersection. Because sometimes we might like to calculate things that uh, let's say uncountably many times a continuous time stochastic process. Think about stochastic process uh, modeling the stock price of Tesla. Assume that event that the Tesla stock price is above $800 all the time in continuous time during the next year. So for this event, we would need the infinite, uncountably infinite um, intersection of um, events. We would like to have that as well. Unfortunately, that is a little bit too much to hope for. 
So it so happened the theory of uncountable infinities was developed around 130 years ago by Cantor and Riemann and colleagues. They started to understand how to work with, with uncountable infinities rigorously in mathematics. And uh, there were people such as Lebec, Henri Lebec, Emil Borel, and um, some Italian counterparts and another German um, and Russian. And they as understood that uh, if you work with uh, uncountably infinite intersections and unions, you will and you may and you often will run into problems in some axioms. This is why we have decided, or not, not myself, but let's say many people before me, especially Andrei Kolmogorov, that um, we don't require uncountably infinite unions and intersections in the definition of event spaces. We only require countably infinite intersections and unions. This is what leads to us to the definition of a sigma algebra, and it is here. The definition of sigma algebra is here. So a collection of F, a collection of subsets of omega, and because it's a collection of subsets, we could think that it's a sub collection of the power set of omega. Remember, this is the power set. So we say that the collection of sets is a sigma algebra on omega if three properties hold. First, the full set should be in the collection. Second, uh, if we get one set from the collection, then the complement, so stable for under complements, that should be true. And finally, um, we need that if we have a countably infinite list of events in F or sets in F, so then the countably infinite union should also be in F. That's what we require. And if these three properties are valid, then we say that this collection F is a sigma algebra. And now we know this. What happened to the intersections? What happened to the intersections? So I was just saying that we also require the countably infinite intersections. It is actually there. It's implicit. It's not written in these axioms because it's a consequence of these axioms. So let's see how we can derive it immediately from these axioms. We take a pen here and let's note. It's actually written there, but think about um, that. Um, let's pick a sequence E1, E2. A countably infinite um, sequence of uh, events in F. So we assume that they are in F. And now we ask, what about the intersection of um, these events, n from 1 to infinity? So now we are looking at the intersection of all these events. And we ask, is this also a member of the collection F? Well, it's not in the axioms, but then we might remember from some other course, or we might learn it now that we can transform intersections into unions by taking complements. So there's a so-called De Morgan law, actually it's mentioned here, it's in appendix. So by De Morgan's law, we can look at the complement of this. And the De Morgan's law says that the complement of an intersection is the union of the complements. So by applying this, we can write this as the union of the complements of En, and then we take another complement, which is actually below in the text as well. So now we see that uh, this intersection is actually a union of complements, and then we take a complement. Now let's recall this E1, E2, each of these were members of F. So then the E and complement is also a member of F. Each one of these, because we are using this rule, the sigma complement rule. And 
then we know that each of these E and C, each of these sets is a member of F. Then we use the axiom number three that uh, we have a closed under countably infinite uh, union. So then we know that this union here is also a member of F, right? And then finally, we are taking one more complement of a member of F. So then we know that the complement is also a member of F. So we conclude that actually this is a member of F as well. So we learned that um, if we have a, any list of elements in F, it follows that the intersection of this numerated a list of elements um, is also in F. And that means that F is also closed under countably infinite intersections. Okay. Another thing is that, of course, we would like to calculate the probability for empty set representing that nothing happens. So we know that the empty set is the complement of the full set. So, and by this axiom here, the full set is a member of F. So then the empty set is a complement of something which is a member of F. We know that the empty set is a member of F as well. So that's how this definition actually works in practice. Let me clear this and we, we could say that uh, we could rephrase the definition of sigma algebra by saying that instead of, of requiring omega, we could require that sigma, uh, the empty set and the full set are both members of F. And here we could require that uh, also require that uh, for any list also the intersection um, is in F. And it's important to say it's a countably infinite intersection, so n from one to infinity. Okay. Uh, there are questions about this.